Section 5.1.8, Juvenile Courts. I'm Dr. Adam McKee, author of Criminal Justice, An Overview of the System. Today, we'll delve into the crucial role of juvenile courts within the juvenile justice system. We'll also explore the impact of the U.S. Supreme Court's landmark decisions on juvenile proceedings. The Role of Juvenile Court Judges Juvenile court judges hold a pivotal role in the juvenile justice system, akin to their counterparts in the adult criminal justice system. These judges are responsible for overseeing the operations of the juvenile court and, in many jurisdictions, the juvenile probation departments. In smaller jurisdictions, they may also manage the court's finances and the probation departments. The beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors of juvenile court judges can significantly impact other criminal justice agencies and the entire community. For instance, judges who fail to address juvenile delinquency in schools can contribute to a disruptive and lawless learning environment. Conversely, judges who are excessively harsh in their decisions may violate the doctrine of parens patriae, which mandates the state to protect the child's best interests. Juvenile court judges must balance various factors when making decisions. They must ensure that all processes and decisions are carried out fairly and without bias. Additionally, they must balance the best interests of the juvenile, the victim, and the community. Upholding the constitutional rights of all parties involved is another crucial responsibility. Despite the differences between the juvenile justice system and the adult system, due process protections must still be maintained in juvenile proceedings. This requirement often creates a complex conflict between the adversarial process and the child's best interests. Overall, the role of juvenile court judges is vital. They must ensure that all parties are treated fairly and that decisions are made in the best interests of everyone involved. Their decisions can have far-reaching consequences for individuals and communities, so they must approach their responsibilities with care and consideration. Juveniles and the Supreme Court Historically, cases involving juvenile proceedings rarely reached the U.S. Supreme Court. However, beginning with the Warren Court in the 1960s, the Supreme Court issued several landmark decisions that significantly impacted the structure and function of the juvenile justice system. Let's look at some of these key cases. Kent v. United States, 1966. Kent v. United States was a crucial case that established that juveniles are entitled to due process rights in court proceedings. This decision ensured that juveniles have the same rights as adults regarding the legal system. The case involved a 16-year-old boy named Morris Kent, who was transferred to adult court without a hearing. The Supreme Court ruled that such a transfer without a hearing violated Kent's due process rights, setting a precedent for future juvenile cases. In Ray Galt, 1967. In Ray Galt was another landmark decision that held that juveniles accused of crimes must be afforded many of the same due process rights as adults. This case involved 15-year-old Gerald Galt, who was sentenced to a state industrial school until the age of 21 for making an obscene phone call. The Supreme Court ruled that Galt's due process rights had been violated because he had not been notified of the charges against him, had not been given the opportunity to confront his accuser, and had not been afforded legal counsel. This decision was a significant step in ensuring juveniles are treated fairly and justly in the legal system. Breed v. Jones, 1975. Breed v. Jones was another critical case that held that finding a child delinquent in a juvenile court and then trying the child in adult court amounts to double jeopardy. This decision ensured that juveniles were not subjected to excessive punishment for their actions. The case involved Gary Jones, who was found delinquent in juvenile court and then tried as an adult for the same offense. The Supreme Court ruled that this violated the double jeopardy clause of the Fifth Amendment. Shaw v. Martin, 1984. Shaw v. Martin was a case that held that the preventive detention of a juvenile does not necessarily violate due process. This decision was important in ensuring that juveniles deemed a threat to society could be detained for public safety reasons. The case involved Gregory Martin, who was detained pending trial for a robbery he allegedly committed. The Supreme Court ruled that preventive detention of juveniles is permissible under the Due Process Clause if it is to protect society and the juvenile. Doe v. Renfro, 1981. Doe v. Renfro was a case that upheld a lower court's decision that a search of schoolchildren for narcotics by a drug dog is not a violation of their rights. This decision set an important precedent for using search and seizure practices in schools. The case involved a student named Mary Doe, who was subjected to a strip search after a drug dog indicated that she had drugs. 
The Supreme Court ruled that the search was reasonable given the school's interest in preventing drug use. New Jersey v. TLO, 1985. New Jersey v. TLO established the evidentiary standard for searches of students by school officials at reasonable suspicion. This decision ensured that students were afforded reasonable protection against unreasonable searches and seizures. The case involved a student known as TLO, who was caught smoking in a school bathroom. A search of her purse revealed drug paraphernalia. The Supreme Court ruled that the search was reasonable and did not violate TLO's Fourth Amendment rights. Hutby v. Strauss, 1993. Hutby v. Strauss was a case that held that curfew laws were constitutional because they were designed to protect the community. This decision was important in ensuring that curfew laws can be used to maintain public safety, particularly in high crime areas. The case involved a challenge to a Dallas curfew law aimed at reducing juvenile crime. The Supreme Court ruled that the curfew law was a reasonable measure to protect public safety. These landmark decisions by the Supreme Court have significantly impacted the juvenile justice system. They have helped ensure that juveniles are treated fairly and justly in the legal system and that their constitutional rights are protected. Juvenile court judges and the appellate system play a crucial role in shaping the experiences of juveniles within the justice system, balancing the interests of the juvenile, the victim, and the community. Thank you for joining me, Dr. Adam McKee, as we explored the crucial role of juvenile courts and the impact of landmark Supreme Court decisions on the juvenile justice system. If you found this video informative, please like, share, and subscribe for more insights into the criminal justice system. Feel free to leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Until next time, stay informed and stay engaged.